Uh, okay. Brent, we're live. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to Wall Street Reporter's next Super Stock live stream, February 19th, 2021. We're back with Logic, LGIQ. We're going to have Brent's son. Uh, he's going to give us the update what's happened. We haven't seen Brent in a while, but uh, first, for anybody that's new to our program, our goal is to bring you those stocks which have that 10x to 100x upside potential. Companies going after massive multi-billion dollar opportunities. They're at a key inflection point and there are multiple catalysts in place to unleash that value. Uh, just in the last month already, well, in the last 18 months, we've already had uh, four, four companies that are up between 1,300 and 2,000% and a whole bunch this month that are up uh, 800. <laughs> Things are going crazy right now. So That's we, great. what we're going to find out is if Logic is going to be that next 10 or 100x, 10, 10 bag or, or more. Uh, the stock uh, the stock started off at 350 when we introduced it in July, hit a high of 14. Recently, it's pulled back to seven and change. Um, you know, I mean, Brent, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna find out if this could be our next you know $70 stock or at least 35. That would make it a an official 10 bagger from from the debut. Uh, sure. So with that said, Brent, we haven't seen you in a long time. So Hey, you've been yeah, it's, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. And I, I know you're doing this. Um, I, I think the, the key thing is that you got this uh, IPO happening right now. Uh, that's you're going to be trading on the neo market in Canada. So I think the bankers regulate. You, you kind of have to, you know, I guess keep quiet. There's a quiet period. You have to. So you we, haven't been able to talk too much in the last month. That's that's true. We've uh, we've been been. Uh, Pretty, pretty limited in terms of actual press releases that we're able to put out. Um, once we get closer to the IPO, um, we'll be able to, to start going out with news that uh, um, is, is very possibly uh, backlogged up until this point. So I think uh, it should give our, our viewers and, and shareholders um, a lot more in terms of updates and, and uh, seeing where we are and how things have progressed. Okay, so this is actually good to hear. That there's a backlog of news, uh, so that there's so that, that's actually I, this is the first I'm hearing this. So, so which is I guess the point of having these live streams to get the new information. So sure. there's a backlog of news. Once the stock is on Neo, once the the IPO is done, there's going to be a, a news flow. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Indeed. So I'm assuming it's going to be you know good news uh, and. Um, Let's talk about the IPO here. So just, I mean, I, I know there's a limited, you can only say limited things, but what? just give us an update. This is the Mackey, Mackey Research is the banker in Canada, That's right? Correct. That's correct, yes. Um, I'll, I'll talk about um, a combination of things, um, the process itself, and then where we are in the process so our, so our viewers um, will better understand. Um, I would like to preface this with, it is an IPO, an initial public offering, because we have not offered shares to the public in Canada. And so it is um, by all intents and purposes an IPO. Um, so <clears throat> the process itself, Jack, um, <clears throat> is such that um, the company files a preliminary prospectus, which we did on January 27th. The regulators, the OSC or Ontario Securities Regula uh, Commission, um, have 10 business days to comment, which they did last week. Um, <clears throat> So we work through those responses and they should be submitted now. Um, they'll have another 10 business days to comment again. Um, the process goes until they exhaust their comments and then our investment banker, Mackey Research Capital, will move towards pricing in the IPO. If you look at the process there, it's the exact same as here in the US. Um, and I would, I would note that the NEO, the exchange, which is a tier one global exchange, defers to the regulators for clearance um, because we are already quantitatively qualified by a factor of three to six X um, on all their minimum qualifications. Okay. And I think before we talk about one of the reasons why you're going with Neo is really what is it, two reasons. One is to, to you know reach the you know the Canadian market, which is you know, a great market, I think, for, for logic, but also two is like from Neo, you could it's an easier step to get back into uh, NASDAQ or NYSC. Just because it's like there's a process you explain. Can you, if you want to just mention that. Sure, sure. Um, well, let me talk about both parts. So, 
So why why Canada? Um, Shopify Shopify has been is the the leading e commerce enabler um, that people are familiar with, and certainly carries a, a a very large market cap and trades at a very large multiple. Um, but there are also smaller e commerce companies and e commerce enablers. Um, that have gone public in Canada, one which I'll speak about in a moment, um, Acuity Ads, um, <clears throat> which is very similar to one part of our business, Lightspeed, um, and a number of others that are similar sized um, that access the Canadian market, um, mostly because um, you know, Canada as, as, a, as an investor base um, has always been um, a little more uh, receptive to businesses that, that are um, outside of North America. And so you, know, you, you see a lot of earlier stage companies doing their IPOs there and the investor audience is, is quite familiar with them. So it, it's done very well in terms of the ability for these companies to appreciate in, in price and value and in turn fund their expansion and execution. Yeah. So there's two things I think which, which is important is, is, is that, you know, logic is actually, I mean, the flow, the market, it's a pretty tight. It does not take a lot to move the stock. And I think once you have the Canadian or, you know, investor you know, base, the market opens up, it really doesn't take a lot to, 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 you know, move the stock to where it needs to be. Um, and the other thing is the Canadians are, you know, a little bit more, I don't know, have more of an international outlook. So they understand like, for example, a lot of your businesses is in Indonesia, right? So, you know, uh, Americans don't know where Indonesia is. Canadians are very comfortable with, you know, global markets. I mean, you know, they have resource companies that operate in, I don't know, uh, <laughs> everywhere in the world. They have, you know, tech companies. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting market. But uh, let's, just for anybody that's new to the story, because we've got, like, a lot of new people here, and also people need to be reminded of what you do. So in, in a nutshell, Brent, can you explain, you know, what Logic does, you know, sort of the, the business model there? Certainly. Okay. Um, yeah. So a, a very high level view, we are an e-commerce enabler. What does that mean? Um, it means getting businesses that are offline online. Um, most of them are micro and small businesses that desire to have their business online. Um, another component of that, which is extremely important, um, which we've actually gone into last year in, in in fact, a year ago when we acquired uh, Push Interactive, Push is uh, has been renamed Data Logic. And so, when you hear us talk about Data Logic, what is that? Well, that enables companies once they're online to market, advertise, and get leads of people that want to buy their products. So just because you're online does not necessarily mean you're going to be selling online. You need to get in front of people. You need to market to the right target target audience. And that is what we gained by acquiring Push last year. Um, we made another acquisition in the fall of last year, Fixel AI. Um, when we talk about artificial intelligence, it's you know, broadly speaking, it's machine learning, but specific to what we do is, is it, 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 it actually calculates um, based on data fed in where the right target audiences are for companies that are advertising and marketing online. So being able to, to bring that in house um, was another significant step in terms of enabling e-commerce business for our existing clients. And then even medium and larger size companies that have to compete with Amazon and walmart.com and some of the larger ones, they need these services too. So if you look at our business, it's getting micro to small businesses online for the first time and then both enabling those businesses to sell more and also medium and larger size customers. And if you look at our website and our presentations, you'll see some, some actually very large names and a number of publicly traded ones that are in the for Fortune Global 1000 that use our services to better market and advertise to clients. Okay. And you also have, you also have the, the fintech side of the business, you know, in Indonesia, which is uh, uh, going to be you know, ma massive opportunity there. It, uh, it, it is, um, if you look at, at, at the underlying companies that are in fintech and in tech in Indonesia and certainly Southeast Asia on whole, um, you'll see multi-billion dollar valuations there for companies that five years ago um, were about the same size as we are. Um, you know, there's been one notable IPO there, SEA. Um, it's almost $300 a share a year ago. Um, it was, uh, I think it was around... 
25 30 dollars a share so it's done substantially well um it's on the new york stock exchange um i heard the other day that um two of the other peers there gojek and tokopedia um, are merging they've engaged jp morgan to actually um put them into a SPAC, that should be about a 45 to $50 billion valuation. What does that do? Well, that brings a lot of attention to the U.S. markets for companies that trade there. Right now, you, know, you go ask 100 people, what do you know about Indonesia, fintech, uh, tech companies in the U.S.? Um, you'll probably have 98 to 99 of them say, well, I, I don't know anything about that. That is undergoing change right now as we speak. We've been operating there for four years. We have a fintech business. We have a last mile delivery service. We have a micro lending business. Um, all of these um, are underway. Um, we'll be able to talk more about them once we're out of our quiet period. Um, but we're extremely excited about it um, in-house. And I think that once we start to talk more about it, our investors will also. Yeah, no, definitely. So I, I think it's it's important to, um, to oh, I uh, <laughs> have to mention the main thing is, what are you doing in terms of revenues? Give us like a, the financial snapshot. What's so people understand that, you know, the kind of the, the scale. Sure. Do. Sure. Um, okay. So our, our last report was um, for the third quarter of last year. Um, we are scheduled to, um, well, I, I can't say when we're scheduled to, but um, the, uh, the deadline for filing is the end of March. Um, we have always been on time. Um, I do not anticipate it being any different now. So I can only speak to up to, to uh, Q3 of last year, but the trailing 12 months revenues um, were 41 million. Um, one thing US, I would, US, US dollars. Correct, yes, 41 million US. That's right. Um, one thing that we have stated both on the conference calls and through press releases um, is that although the focus historically has been growing the top line, what we're doing right now in going forward is also focusing on margin improvement. If you look at gross margins um, for companies that are in e-commerce enablement, you want to see at least 20 to 25%, um, ideally in the 30s. Once you see companies um, with 30, 40% gross margins, you do see very large multiples obtained uh, because it's very easy for research analysts uh, to point to those and say, okay, um, as they scale up, um, their 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 earnings visibility comes into play very easily. Yeah, yeah, no, it's. it's um, I, I think this this is going to be a, a great catalyst once you're once the stock is trading in Canada. You, know, you have more of a. You know, it, it's a much because again, you're you're it's a smaller market, so you're kind of a bigger fish in that pond. You get much more attention. Institutions understand the story. It's 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 a. I think it's it's going to be pretty exciting. Um, speaking of that, you know, I think Brent, it's important to kind of give an investors context uh, a context in which they can understand kind of the valuations in the space you're in uh, because sure. you know, for some, some companies for whatever reason they're they're undervalued people don't quite understand it just just talk about you know some of the comps in your space uh, certainly okay um, you know I, I would also point out um, you know in, in the past in terms of comparables, we, we have generally pointed to peer companies um, that are, are larger, and I do get a lot of feedback on that. You know, there's, there's, there's a very um, understandable um, you know, critique saying, oh, well, how, how can you say that, that Shopify or Big Commerce or Wix are comparables? Um, the Trade Desk, which is an ad tech, um, how can you say they're comparable when you guys are much smaller? Um, we've recently gone through the exercise of identifying some similar sized companies. Um, and, and what we've found, which is also very interesting and I think quite compelling, is that um, once, you, once you attain exchange listing and you have research coverage and you've got the ability to create more market awareness and you are trading on a global exchange, um, the opportunity for investors to um, close that or narrow that gap in terms of valuation between smaller companies and larger ones is very doable. So um, I'd like to talk about three right now. Um, one of them, um, since uh, we, we are way beyond uh, the, the confidentiality exercise, it's a company named Kubiant, um, headquartered in here in New York. Um, ticker symbol is KBNT. Um, we almost merged with them last year in July. So we were in extensive discussions with them. They did their IPO in August. Um, they did not have the ability to wait 
uh, to do to complete the merger because their financials were going to go stale if they didn't make make the uh, timeline. Um, they did their IPO. They they went out at four dollars a share. Um, currently, they're trading twelve dollars and fifty cents a share. Uh, so you know, seven months out, um, they raised ten million on their IPO. They raised another twenty million in November on a secondary offering. I think they did that at uh, six dollars a share. Again, they're at twelve fifty a share. They've got a one hundred and forty million dollar market cap right now. They're trading at seventy times trailing twelve months revenues. Seventy times trailing twelve months revenues. So in light, they, I was say, so logic. What's the mar the the your the market cap of logic is what? Like how many shares out do you have right now? Uh, about fifteen million. So our market cap's about one hundred and thirty million. Okay. Trailing 12 months revenues as of September um, were about 41, 42 million. So we're at 3x. 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 3x revenues. Okay. So 3x yes. revenues and you have peers. I mean, look, I, I actually do think it's a fair comparison to put you in, with, let's say, Shopify, Trade Desk, anybody in that, because, you know, the comps are the comps. I mean, it's like, you know, that's it, kind of the reality. And these guys are trading at max. Beyond way beyond 10x, right? It's like yeah. yes, yeah, that's that's true. And and you know, if you, again, if you look at the difference between between then and now, I mean, when we were in talks with them, they were privately held. Um, they had only raised raised funding from angel investors and uh, one VC. Now with the now being on a senior exchange, they have access to more capital to continue to grow. That does not hinder investors by saying, oh, you know, we're getting diluted because they raise money. What that what that is? That's enabling. It enables them to continue to execute on their business model. And the analysts and the investors that are familiar with them have clearly taken notice. And you look at where their stock's gone, $2 to twelve fifty dollars in the course of two months. I, mean, I think that that's quite evident of, of an investor appetite into ad tech. Okay. So I would point out that Kubiant is in ad tech. Our data logic division is in ad tech. So the platform that we've built out, and if you look at the, the, the management team, that we've grown um, on that end. Um, you know, these are all ad tech executives that have built you know, Yahoo's ad tech business, Magnite's um, ad tech business. Magnite, another example, a year ago, it was $4 a share. It hit 64 last week. And Magnite is in ad tech. Um, Data Logic, our division is in ad tech. Um, we've made two acquisitions in the space. We've also publicly stated that we're looking for more additional um, tuck-in acquisitions on the IP side. Um, and once you once you get to a to a global exchange, investors and analysts start to look at that and say, "Okay, wow! So evaluations in their space are here, and they're down here. Um, how do you narrow that?" Uh, you're also so let's talk about some of the other comps. You have uh, what is it? Uh, acuity Acuity Ads. Yes, um, that's a great one, Jack. Acuity is listed in Canada. They went they went public there first, um, and then they cross listed here in the U.S. Um, they are also in in, in ad tech and do e commerce enablement. Um, if you look back a year ago, they were roughly seventy five cents a share. Um, right now, they are twenty five dollars a share. So they've had a huge run. They're trading at about sixteen times revenues, um, and their their revenues are roughly the same size we are. Um, so you know, I think that's another great um, comparable. And then I would also point out another one, um, although, well, actually quite a bit smaller, um, a company named Sonasoft, um, SSFT. Um, their primary business is in um, e-commerce and they also ha have AI based solutions that are centered around business processes and e-commerce marketing. Um, when we acquired Fixel AI last year, um, and you look at Fixel's business and you look at Sonosoft's AI business, um, they're, we're actually a little bit larger than they are in terms of our AI business um, if you break it out by revenue. But if you look at, at Sonosoft, they're trading at a market cap of about $160 million. Um, their e-commerce business did about $10 million in trailing 12 months revenues. So they're at 16 and a half times revenues right now. Um, so I think that's another um, worthwhile comparable to look at. So Kubian, Acuity, Sonosoft, you know, those are not multi-billion dollar companies in terms of revenues. Yeah. Um, you know, they're getting there in terms of the uh, the market cap. Yeah, I mean, really, I mean, based on the comps, I mean, I'm actually very surprised, like, for, that, that, that uh, you know, Logic is not trading at, you know, 10x revenues, at least, which would be, you know, 400 million divided by, you know, I mean, the stock should be right now $30, $40. I mean, 
But we, again, we've seen, um, I know you can't comment because you know, there's the IPO period, et cetera, right now. Uh, but look, we've seen, uh, I think some of the people on our, on our channel have seen the, um, there's uh, there's been some uh, you know independent research or analysts on uh, like uh, seeking out. Uh, I always mention Chris. I don't I, I don't know who pronounces his last name. It's Lacourcy Lacourcy Lacourcy, and he's uh, you know he's been very bullish. I think he's had a forty dollar target on Logic for quite a while, um, and he really breaks down the whole value proposition. Um, let's jump into some audience questions. We only have a couple of minutes, here, so sure. let's see if we can get some uh, questions answered. Uh, uh, Jayant is asking a uh, tentative date for the NEO listing. Um, okay, so uh, you know, th thanks for the question, Jayant. Um, again, the process is um, centered around the, um, the regulators completing their, um, their comments. Once you get through those, um, then you go effective in the investment bank moves towards pricing. Um, I'm sorry, marketing, pricing, and then the actual IPO. Um, how long does that take? Um, they have 10 business days um, at the regulatory uh, agency to um, send comments. And once they're exhausted, then you're, you're effective. So, you know, if, um, you know, if you look at it in terms of, of, of timing, um, where does that put us? Um, I can't say specifically, but possibly um, in March. Okay, so it's coming up, and and also to break down, what's the um, how much are you raising? Like, what's going to be the the? Can you talk about that? We can. We filed what's called a bulleted prospectus. Um, so once we get to a certain point in terms of comments from the OSC, uh, Mackie starts to look at, at pricing. Okay, uh, okay. So uh, Jayant is asking one more question here. Uh, how many customers do you have on the platform, uh, and what's the geographic diversity? Yeah, that's a great question. Sure. Okay. Um, so we've got multiple platforms, actually. <laughs> so there's we, we do. Um, sure. I, I think I, I think Jayant's probably asking about um, the platform that we launched with back in 2015. Um, we we marketed it under the the brand of um, Create App, and then our our white label partners and resellers um, sold it under their brands. Um, globally, in terms of micro to small businesses, there are over 300,000 micro businesses around the world um, that are on the platform. The geographic diversity spans from parts of the EU, um, so France, um, Germany, uh, Spain, Switzerland, um, a bit in Italy, a little bit in Germany. Um, in terms of Asia, uh, South Korea, Philippines, Malaysia, um, Indonesia, Singapore, Hong Kong. Um, and also a bit in Thailand and Vietnam. Okay, uh, Kevin's asking, what is, I guess he's asking, what kind of news is allowed or not allowed until the NEO, um, until you start trading on NEO? Um, we're, we're able to file um, you know, 8Ks, 10, and we'll be filing our 10K um, uh, when, when, it's, when, it's, uh, when it's due. Um, in terms of actual press releases, those will go through um, our underwriters council. What, what companies need to be sensitive of um, when they're publicly traded already, and, and you know, again, we're in the OTCQX market, um, they need to be sensitive of what's called uh, being deemed to be in pre-marketing or, or, or seasoning the market. You don't want to be in that position um, because releasing certain things that may influence the market um, could have a negative effect in terms of the regulator's um, acceptance of it. Okay. Uh, okay. So what? Uh, let's see here. Uh, Paul. Uh, Paul. Uh, I don't know if you can answer. Uh, when is the next ten k due? And what do you and do you anticipate positive or negative? He's not asking for the number, but it's going it's to be up for. Uh, can you answer that question? I don't even know if you can answer that. The 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 filing deadline for the ten k is uh, March thirtieth. Um, we have not been late on filings. Um, in terms of talking about positive or negative, I can't, I can't comment about that. Um, but what I would say is, is, is what we have publicly disclosed before. And I indicated earlier in, on the live stream, um, our focus has been around the improvement of gross margins. Okay. So I mean, basically like right now, the kind of your, you know, one of the reasons why we haven't seen you in about a month is your, your hands are kind of tied in what, how much you can talk about or whatever. So numbers, things like that is kind of like off <laughs> it's uh yeah it's off the table until uh the neo deal uh let's see here um oh uh great question paul's asking 
this is the this is the question I, we're all trying to figure out. What is the difference between Logic and these other companies that have such higher valuation multiples? Why is there such a big disparity? That's that's a good that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I mean, I can sit here and talk about it for an hour, but I, I won't. Um, <clears throat> If you look, if you look at, at, at the, the historical peer group that we've looked at um, in terms of comps, most of them are larger companies. So if you look at Shopify, you look at Wix, BigCommerce, um, they're all exchange listed. I think that that makes a, a, a tremendous difference. Being on a, on a, on a tier one global exchange um, really is, is night and day. Um, research coverage makes a big difference being able to um, undergo IR and market awareness that that resonates with people who can actually buy because you're tra you're traded on an exchange. That's one. Um, secondly, um, margins. Um, historically and, cur and currently, why are we, we working on improving margins? Um, historical margins have been okay. Um, I think what you're, you're seeing now is um, a, a move towards margins that are more similar to the larger companies. Um, and as, as I indicated earlier in the live stream, um, some of the smaller companies like Acuity and Kubient, <clears throat> which are both based on, on, I'm sorry, both trading on tier one exchanges, um, broad, broader market awareness, um, research coverage. So that makes a huge difference. Uh, okay, let's wrap up uh, here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, any new acquisition talks at the moment? Can you talk about that? Um, you right now with the IPO. Uh, I, I can. Well, yeah. We again, we have we have stated publicly that we are very active in M and A, um, and know, again, we made two acquisitions last year. Um, it is in our best interest to add on um, a couple of key components um, to our platform. And should we do so, I think that, that being able to, to make a very, very strong case towards why um, valuations should be um, more similar to peers, um, at least on the ad tech side, um, is very doable. In terms of e-commerce enablers, um, you know, again, we're trading a, a huge disparity to our peer group. Um, and you know, being listed on, a, on, a, on, a, on an exchange makes a huge difference so we'll we'll certainly see okay and um okay so brent uh let's wrap up um i don't think you, i usually ask about potential news flow you can't talk about that until the ipo i mean really, right. really the reason we brought you out here is just you know to, to so people know you're alive because you can't <laughs> about, you can't put out news but you know investors very much that, right? this is uh you know like in the, in, when they kidnap people what is it they, they do the with the newspaper you know proof of life the picture of you <laughs> So yeah. people know you're alive. So yeah, so logic is alive and well. Uh, hopefully, we're going to get this 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 uh, IPO done in the next uh, couple of weeks, because I mean, I I think frankly, look, I mean, between you and me, and you know, it is look the the stock is kind of you know the bankers like to try to keep the price down so that you know when it comes out, you know, their their investors make money. I mean, that's the idea. So they, they look like heroes. The stock goes to you know doubles, goes to 15, 20. Everybody looks good. So. Stack is, I don't, I don't know if it's going to move too much between now and this IPO, but uh, it's. I think this is a good time for people to to get in. Um, I want to ask you a last question. Top three reasons why investors should consider Logic today, in your opinion. In my opinion, um, um, as 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 I as I always point out, both both on 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 the live streams um, and just generally speaking. Um, I think due diligence is, is, is the core component of, of, of looking at, at any company, not just ours. Um, and I would encourage people to not only look at our website and our presentations and listen to, to um, our conference calls. And when you do so, look, look at, at the caliber of, of the management team. It, typically, when you, when you look at smaller companies, you'll find very small management teams. And in, in, you know, in many cases, certainly in the OTC market, if it's a handful of people, sometimes one or two, um, we have a very, very um, senior um, management team that has expertise in in the areas that we work in, and not at nondescript companies, companies that that are are global players and have been for many years. Um, look at the independent board directors. 
independent board directors don't sign on um, just on a whim. There's reputational risk, there's professional risk. And you look at the ones that, that, that we've had for years and the two that, that we've brought on recently, Josh Jacobs and Leah Hickman. Uh, you know, Josh, he was former president of Ogilvy, Ogilvy Digital, which is the third largest ad agency in the world. Why? Well, we're, we're evolving our ad tech business. And Josh has been very instrumental in that. Um, Leah Hickman, she, she is credited in Silicon Valley as having transformed Adobe software from a packaged software company to the cloud. <clears throat> you also look, look at, at customers. We have customers listed on our website. Um, you know, they range from smaller companies to uh, Fortune Global 1000 companies that are publicly traded. Here, and the, the Indonesian government also. I mean, whether the, the yes, they have the, uh, the Social Security Administration as well. So due diligence, critical component. Um, you know, look at look at open source. Um, look at peer companies. Look at where they operate, what they do. Look at what we do, um, and then look at at um, um, you know what we've what we've set out to do in terms of of growing the business, um, where we are right now in terms of of our IPO. Um, and then I think, uh, you know, thirdly, just look at, at this past year in terms of what is transformed um, in terms of our daily lives and how we conduct business and, and life in general. And at the core of that, it's digital. And underlying that is e-commerce and getting in front of people through ad tech. So e-commerce enablement, ad tech, huge, huge beneficiaries of what is now very normal for many um, that before COVID didn't exist. And so you know, the capital markets have rewarded those companies in that space with big multiples, big valuations, help them fund expansion. I don't believe that would, would not um, you know, enable us as we move towards the IPO. Okay, uh, Brent, on that note, I wanna thank you. Uh, hopefully we're gonna have you on uh Next time we're going to have you on is hopefully right after this IPO is done, so we can talk about you know all the stuff that's happening, and this is going to be hopefully you can be allowed to release news. Uh, so um, uh, so we'll we'll see you again in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Thank you, thank you again, Brent. Thanks so much, Jack. Thanks everyone. Okay, uh, let's get ready for our next uh, presenter. Let me just set things up for you here. Okay, this is going to be a debut presentation. Very exciting company. Um, I'm looking forward to getting all the details here. Okay, uh, here we go. And Scott. Am I here? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I, I hear you. I just, uh, I, I just need you to adjust the camera a little bit. Uh, the, the, the thing. So I have more of you. Yeah, yeah, more of you, more of you. Yeah, yeah, more of you. Yep, perfect. Okay, okay, okay. There we go. Fantastic. Okay, Scott. Uh, okay, let's. We're gonna get started. Uh, we're gonna, yeah, everything is ready. Welcome everybody to Wall Street Reporter's next Super Stock live stream, February nineteenth, uh, twenty twenty one. We got a debut presentation. New company we're introducing you today, HAPB Technologies, HAPB on the TSX Venture, HAPBF over the counter. Uh, we got Scott Donald, the CEO. Scott, uh, welcome. Yeah, good to be here, Jack. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, Scott. You know, uh, I, by the way, I have. I'm gonna. I got. I got the device. I'm gonna the device. Yeah. I'm. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be wearing around my 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 like this right now. Yeah. Uh, now, you know, I, you know, I just got this. I haven't set it up yet. We're gonna we're gonna explain to the audience what this is. I you know, by the way, I like it. It's glowing. It's got this is uh, I don't know if people can tell. It's actually it's a LED, right? It's like an Apple. Yeah. So when it's playing and giving you the sensations, it's slowly breathing in and out. It literally looks like Iron Man under your shirt. Oh. It's awesome. So you just put it under your shirt, and no one sees it. You can turn the light off if you want to too, but. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, so basically, so before we get started, really, I should let people know that you know, um, you know, your company, right? It was actually introduced to us by you know one of your um, you know lead investors, and it, and this guy brought us actually to actually he he was behind two companies that we've been featuring on the you know for the last year, which was the first one was Next Tech. That was a stock that 
you know, went up uh, 15x, I believe, from where, where we introduced. I think it was about 50 cents, went to like $10. And then also Fans Unite, which um, uh, he, uh, he he actually introduced that company to us. Uh, and that debuted, with, I think, at 30 cents on our platform or 20. I forget. It was in the, in the 20s or 30s back in July. Today, it's $2.25. So it's about up 9x. So there's a good, uh, you know, tra- there's good provenance. Um, you know, to, so you, you come from like, you know, there's a good, <laughs> this, we're going to find that if essentially if happy is going to be that next, um, 10 X or 100 X stock. So that's, that's going to be the uh, thing. And I think we're going to have a lot of questions today. So, um, everybody watching, yeah, please, uh, you know, after I'm kind of done with a couple of questions I have, make sure to ask Scott your questions. Uh, I know we're going to have a lot of questions and, you know, then decide for yourself if uh, happy is going to be that next, you know, hundred bagger stock, um, Scott. With, with all that done, let's um, explain to us what do you, what is this technology? What do you do? What does Happy do? Well, this technology, by the way, I'm not the creator, but what we can do is we designed a product that allows you to choose how you want to feel. Okay, it's like the next generation of. Um, general wellness products. So moods, feelings, sensations at the click of a button. So the tech, I'll get into its crazy technology. It's been going for about 18 years, $80 million invested into this. The guy who invented Cialis and his team built this tech, 37 patents in 60 countries. And my team took that technology and licensed it for the consumer market over the last two years. So the idea here is we can help you feel through these very precise magnetic fields that come from our labs out in Seattle. We can give you sensations that make you feel more alert, that literally mimics a couple cups of coffee. That's what we got it from. Um, We can make you feel like a focus signal. That's what I'm on right now. Um, I love this right before a presentation. It dials me in. Uh, Feels like a cigar, honestly. Um, Muscle relaxants. We have a relaxed signal. Uh, we have a calm signal that's a de-stressor at the end of a long day. We have, we have tons of people using that for like at the end of work days, on a trip, like on the flights or watching movies. They just throw that signal on. It's, it's awesome. You just check out. Uh, we have a sleepy signal for sleep. People put under their pillow uh, and their deep REM goes up. And we've got a happy signal, which I, I'm pretty sure is going to be <laughs> everyone's favorite long term. That one mimics a couple of happy hour shots, literally. Okay. So, so you mentioned sleep. Sleep by itself is a uh, that's a massive, massive. You know, I mean, essentially, you you really. I mean, this. You know, this is the uh, what is it? The uh, uh, you know, there's there's, I think there was an old. Um, you know, I think there was an old uh, story on on you know one of these old Wall Street stories that hey. The perfect stock, you know, the, the thing that's going to be the next, you know, million bag. Not even t- the thing is going to be, you know, it's going to, you know, uh, you know, it's going to taste like chocolate, uh, feel like sex, and cure cancer. All in one thing. That's, <laughs> but essentially, you, you're, you're. It's kind of what you're, you're kind of pretty close. Look, we're we are our vision is in, is huge for this. Um, and what I like is that we've brought on the right partners to. We are fringe right now because no one's people are just now starting to hear about us and the conversion rates are amazing through affiliates and and our funnels we're testing. But I love that we're getting the right partners on to just educate people, show the science, show the double blinded placebo controlled studies we finished last May, show the the six peer reviewed journal entries and CNS oncology and all the data from our parent company that we're using these signals from. So we're getting the right people to try to tell this story um, because it is a, it's a brand new story. I mean, 50 years, 80 years ago, you'd be burned at the stake if someone told you about internet. Okay. Um, But if you really get into the science here of what we're doing, it's the next, we believe the next major category that's going to be created in the mental wellness space. Uh, we're going to have some, actually, this is a a audience uh, comment question. Happy. I I, I would agree with this. Essentially, you know, happy is essentially tapping into markets, which are, I mean, it's, it, it, it touches, it's, that's why I had that kind of, I mean, it touches like everything, essentially feelings. I mean, look, essentially you're, you're, you're creating feelings. I mean, everything in life motivation is about feelings. People buy the car they buy, they consume, 
to get a feeling. People, <laughs> everything is about, you know, it's it's the whole point of being human. Yeah, straight to the vein of what people yeah. want. Exactly. Okay. And this, okay, essentially your, your technology is able to create feelings on demand. So it's like, you know, perfect for, you know, today's, today's audience, which wants instant gratification. They right. want it now. They want, they don't want to, you know, they want the thing that, you know, they want it now. They don't want to care. Okay. So I think it's important for people to understand is that there is a, there is a real science behind this. Uh, there is studies, there's, you know, $80 million of research. Talk, can you talk a little bit about the history and then we can talk about the markets here? Cause I think people get an idea of how big the, the, the scope of the scale of this could be, but talk about the, the kind of the, 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 the reality, you know, the, the background of this. Yeah. So, so our, our, our parent company, their name is called emulate therapeutics out of Seattle, Washington, uh, over a dozen PhDs and scientists built this program, uh, including Dr. Kenneth Ferguson led the team to invent Cialis and a whole chunk of other incredible scientists and doctors that helped this technology come to life. The, the, their initial hypothesis starting way back in 2002, 2003 was, what if drug molecules had a signal? What if they had a wave? What if they had a wake, okay? And what if that wake is what's causing a sensation in your body? Okay, what if that's possible? Okay, just to, these guys were not business people. Let's, we have to make sure everyone understands this. The business end of this is coming in the last several years, but the first five, six years was a bunch of scientists in a basement. And their idea was what Einstein said, which is all things are connected at a subatomic level through frequency, through sound. And so for them, they thought, okay, there's a technology out there that the Navy uses and it's called magnetometers. You can look it up, Google magnetometer um, devices. And the Navy uses these to find nuclear Russian subs in the Pacific. It's, it's these little propane tanks that are basically the world's most powerful recording devices for frequencies, okay? And instead of looking outward, they thought, what if we could look internally at like a molecular level, okay? So they had this crazy idea, went down to the company in San Diego called Tristan Technologies, who made these products for the Navy. And they pulled their money and grabbed a couple of them. And they tweaked them for about four and a half years put Faraday cages around them, pumped them full of liquid helium, talked about all, you know, or worked on all these little techniques to listen internally, okay? And so what they were eventually uh, able to do was put a certain molecule, their first one was actually Taxol, which is a chemo drug. And they put this little vial inside of this tank and it threw off a wake, threw off a frequency, okay? And they were able to then replicate and imitate those effects, emulate their name, those effects onto animals and humans to mimic the effect of chemo. That without any toxicological side effects. Basically, you're not digesting poison. Okay, so this is the, what our parent company has been doing. They've been in FDA, they're through FDA two already. That's what all the research has been for the last 15 years. I invested in that company as well as many of my family and friends way back 12 years ago or more now because we believe in what they're doing. They're really changing the game here. I, I'm laughing at the beginning of this call. You said, what was it? Chocolate, sex, and cancer? If, like, she was kidding. Yeah, basically. They, <laughs> so they're, they're not curing cancer, obviously, but it, they can help extend life and they can help with people you know, without giving them the, the nightmare effects of chemo. So anyway, long story short, that is how this technology was built. But it's not just you know, chemo. Talk, you know, tax all that they can do this with. They can do this with many types of chemicals and, and, and molecules and compounds of interest. So um, I have a background in apps, consumer tech. I've got the largest school fundraising franchise in America called Apex. I've got 500 employees. We've got an app team, a promotional team. I've got just all the pieces. And a couple of years ago, we were talking to the board and basically they said the consumer market would be very interesting, not medical. Okay. Let's do a mood feeling product that uses this technology and license it for the greater consumer markets. And I immediately had the vision of what this would look like. The app connects to the device, plays these signals on command, unlimited all day long. I mean, we have hundreds and we have thousands of customers using this every day or two right now. And our top users are between eight and 12 hours a day, Jack. And they're using this for alert, 
sleepy at night when they go to sleep. They use relax after a long day. They're, you know, if you're sitting a long time in a chair, you use the relax signal for your muscles. It, it is starting to gain a ton of momentum. And so that's what we are doing at, at Happy. Okay, so this is okay. So we're gonna like unpack all this. This is like a, a I mean, the 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 possibilities here are like incredible. We're gonna get into how you're marking this because it's incredible stuff. So, bottom line is the technology behind this. It's a real technology. This is not like some like quackery stuff or like this is you have like this is this this this, yeah. this is like the real deal. Okay, um, so let's talk about um, okay. So so this is I guess. Would it be fair to say that this is kind of like really your first device? It's almost like you know when Apple launched the uh, the iPod. I don't know if anybody remembers the iPod, but that was the that was the first thing. Then it became the I don't know the iPhone and well everything else. But this is not ultimate. You're going to have essentially your technology platform. Is that fair to say? Yeah, that's and this exactly is just one iteration. Think of this. Think think of this product. To get those feelings out. Yeah, this is like the ugly brick iPod that came out at the very beginning, okay? We just wanted to get something out that would be easy, sleek, lightweight, that everyone could use and understand. If you just saw the latest press release, we just had our provisional patent for a bed form factor, a, a topper, a mattress topper that we're working on right now with our design partners. We've been, we're about a month and a half into that. We're really excited later this year to announce the, what that full product's gonna look like. But that is another way to use the same exact signals and sensations while you're sleeping, right? It connects to the app. It's a hub and spoke model. This is a platform technology. Ski helmets, yoga mats, massage tables. Like there's a, there are endless possibilities of where this technology can go. People are just looking to feel better throughout the day without having to ingest a bunch of chemicals or substances or pills that can may, maybe hurt them, right? I'm not, look, I'm not against a drink. I love a good Manhattan, but I don't need three or four. I need one and the happy signal. Save 50,000 calories last year, okay? People use, people like to drink coffee, but more than three cups, you're gonna get the shakes and diarrhea. Use the alert signal with a cup of coffee if you still want to. So there's lots of ways to be able to utilize the technology here. Yeah, okay, so so okay. So basically, so this is kind of really the start. This is. This is the start, and and it's it's almost like uh, I don't know. Well, you, I mentioned the the iPhone. Obviously, we had the old cell phones, which would start off as a brick, and now it became like you know a little device, and you know, and then multiple different iterations. Um, okay, so incredible stuff. Okay, so we talk about some of the kind of markets. How are you? So the, so this is the first thing that you're, you're you're in the market with, right? So let's talk about like how are you selling it? What's the business model? What is itself? Let's go into that. Yeah, so we are going um, B2C directly, sold from our website. Um, we brought on uh, Conscious Partners. They are the marketing arm of Aura Ring. If anyone here uses Aura Ring to track sleep, um, they almost single-handedly took Aura Ring up to $250 million in valuation with their marketing funnels, affiliates, paper ads. They are now same deal with us for the last eight months. And they've done an incredible job building websites, funnels, ads, retargeting. They're getting that cost per acquisition down more and more every day to where we, we feel really confident now to be able to increase spend very quickly. Um, we've, we've got Dave Asprey as our main uh, affiliate with Jim. Dave Asprey is the father of biohacking if anybody follows any sort of biohacking world. Jim Quick, who's the brain coach to all the stars, Oprah and Will Smith and all these people. He, they're both investors and advisors of ours. Joe Polish, one of the top marketers uh, on the planet. He has connected us with infinite affiliates already. So we're getting the right names to launch this product. You know, we just brought on um, Kevin Harrington last month, original shark on Shark Tank, and he's now connecting us with tons of affiliates all over the world um, to be able to, to get the word out about this product. So we have digital assets, swipe copy, pictures, testimonials, hundreds of testimonials now that people are sharing. And so it's getting easier more and more every day to educate the world. It's okay. You mentioned, I mean, it seems like the, essentially this is going to be, it's market you know, direct to consumer, which is like, this is like basically the, uh, you know, VCs are love this model. You know, this is where all the hot companies are. Like, let's talk about, you start with sleep. Like what is it, the purple mattress or those guys, then you have, I'm trying to think, there's so many of these DTC, D2, D2C guys right now. It's like, you can't keep, it's you know massive market. And you have, you just mentioned like 
all these like key influencers. I mean, like you're really hitting. I mean, it's like it's almost like you're really connect connecting with the right demographic. I mean, this is like a perfect thing. Uh, okay, so question. Uh, Ramsey's asking, what does the product cost? How do you make money with this? Yeah, so we can make it for about a hundred bucks. We sell it for about three fifty. And you can pay a lifetime where you never have to subscribe or pay anything for around 800 and you get all the future signals for unlimited use. All right. Um, so the model here is the app, which I'll show you these signals right now. Here's our in initial playlist. Here's our first six signals. We've got alert, calm, focus, happy, relaxed, sleepy, which I talked about. People are using Almost all these, like, you know, we, we, sleepy is the most used, but that's just because people put under their pillow for four hours every night. And so it's every single day. But the other ones have just as much hits um, and, and sessions as sleepy. It's just not used for four hours every time. Like I don't use focus for four hours. I use it for about an hour and a half. And then I take a break and move on to something else. Um, but we are launching new signals every few months into the app. Think of this like Netflix for feelings, okay? We've got 18 signals in the labs right now. Two home runs. I'm really excited. They're gonna be coming out here in the next uh, little bit in our app um, when we finished all the code to be able to easily allow you to get these signals onto your device. Um, takes 10 minutes, click go, then you have the signal, unlimited play. And so we've got signals that we're looking at for diet right now, hunger suppressant signals memory signals to help with your uh, neurocognitive function, performance signals, increasing blood flow for couples, okay? Which when you think about our bed form factor, now you know where we're going. Um, <laughs> and, and, and the guy behind this, the guy behind your technology invented Cialis also. Uh, yes, but I'm okay. not allowed to publicly make a connection one to one. Okay. We're not gonna, we're not, we're, there's no medical, okay, okay. So, okay, it gives feelings. Does this give, I, we're gonna try to keep this, family friend but friendly but so basically feel like so can this give you the feeling of of, of, of an orgasm for four yeah. hours like no you know? not that no i don't know of any drug who can give get you that um but let's think of it this way okay we mimic sleep aids muscle relaxants you know cups of coffee a couple shots at the bar with your friends um a cigar like we mimic these experiences without anything negative in your body right so if there are other types of compounds that we can bring in and load into the app from our labs, we're going to do it. Our goal is to ultimately have tons of these signals and allow families to subscribe for once. It's like 19 bucks a month for the family. To subscribe. So it's a subscription. Really, you make money on the subscription model, right? Yeah. So, so to get the different field. Okay. So, so if I buy this and I don't pay the monthly fee, it stops working. You'll still get a couple signals for life. Okay. Okay. Oh, so okay. So basically, all the signals for your family, it's like nineteen bucks a month or fifteen bucks if you pay for the year. It's like two two drinks, right? That's the idea behind this. And you know, we've got a very high subscription rate right now, so we're not seeing drop off. We're seeing like people want more signals and they want to try new experiences, and they're and we have it like a family. You know, when you log into Netflix and you've got three four people that can come, you know, and join on Netflix. For that one subscription that's our ultimate goal is because people use you know we have husbands and wives they have to buy another product but they just use the same account and each one chooses their favorite signals throughout the day okay we have a lot of we're going to get into the audience questions uh, scott i hope you have uh, like we, we might be here for a while we're going to we're going to hit all the questions and now, you know why, now you know why this is exploding Everybody yeah, yeah. So, so, so basically um Okay, so the model really is is the recurring revenue, the subscription model from the to get new feelings. You know, it's a little bit like when we first spoke. When I first like somebody like when you explain it, it's like wow, this is like what is it, like that that Blade Runner movie when you know it's a hundred years of the future and there's and people create uh, dreams, they implant dreams or life. You know, so this is like the same. This is like really we're talking about. You know, this is something completely different than anything you know I've ever seen in the market and. It's like it's this is really like next level like future future stuff. I mean, this is like it doesn't get any. This is sort of like the merging of spiritual, the spiritual and the sign and like it's it's out. It's uh, and, and crazy stuff. Um, okay, important question: How long have you been on the market? How long have you been market? What kind of traction do you have? Okay, we launched um, an, a small Indiegogo campaign last year. 
okay? Um, a little uh, over, under a year ago, we launched on Indiegogo. And the whole reason of that, we had already raised millions and millions of dollars, but we did that program just so we could see what our marketing would look like. Would people convert? Would people buy our product, sight unseen, reading through the copy and the digital assets? And our goal was to sell 50 grand worth, just to test. Family and friends, random people, try some ads. We sold over half a million dollars worth, and it was a top 1% on Indiegogo. And so then we shut it off. We're like, we're not gonna be able to fulfill this demand for the next six, seven months, because we were still in manufacturing, and COVID, by the way. So we fulfilled those products by October, okay, of last year, and that's when we launched the website to our first affiliate partners. Dave Asprey was one of the biggest ones. We've got Tim Gray, 5K Runner, a couple, a couple others that are starting to convert really well too. And I think since then we've sold another uh, couple thousand altogether. So I think we're at th over 3,000 total sold. And our manufacturer- you just, Basically, you just launched really a couple months ago, essentially. This is like still, you're not even in a, I, I think one of the first constraints or the issues yet is obviously in manufacturing the product, getting the product done, everything else. And by the way, I have the box, just, uh, I got the box commits, you know, cool. I'm, I'm doing like a demo. We're doing here. We should run an 800 number at the bottom or a link where people, this is <laughs> this box. You know, it's I mean, nice. This is all, you know, good stuff. It comes in this, you get a little bag, a little bag, a little, you know, this thing goes in. You know, it's, this is top stuff here. Okay. So, so you got to, the manufacturing, are you able to manufacture, are you able to scale this right now? That's the question. Yeah. I literally just, I got a text right now. Yeah, we're doing thousands right now. We have uh, an inventory of between 500 and 1500 right now of extra that we're fulfilling. So now we're able to increase market spend. You got to remember, we haven't spent much on marketing yet. Like our cost per clicks, we're just throwing spaghetti at the wall and tweaking all of our funnels and getting everything in. But we're right now about to be in the margins where we can just jack it up. We're literally at the precipice right now and people are starting to hear about it. And so we've got thousands more being made um, every month coming from our, our factory in um, Michigan, here in the States. Um, we had a little bit of supply chain issues with chips and boards with COVID, but most of that's over now. Um, and we're ready to go. Yeah, I mean, it's the next step for us is some key partnerships that we're finalizing right now, and then just slowly, incrementally increasing our ad spend out to the world. So yeah, there you go. Uh, can you make Jason's wife happy? <laughs> um, <laughs> is this a good, is this a good present? Is this, would you recommend this as a present, like a Valentine's Day? I mean, we still double just at Christmas of our monthly volume for, for the whole year. A ton of people, we had two companies buy hundreds of these for all of the um, Satori Capital and Strategic Coach, which is like one of the top entrepreneurial coaching companies in the world. They bought hundreds of them for all their employees at, at the holiday season. And just because they thought, you know what? We wanna invest in our people and give them a really cool product. And so they started, they gave them as a, a mental wellness investment in their people and they're all using it all the time on these coaching calls and like coaching their customers. And now customers are hearing about it. It's a really, really fun investment. We've had about five or six businesses buy them for all their people just because of the, uh, the benefit that the employer is seeing from it, right? Like think about it, more energy in the morning, more productivity throughout the day, less stress from the relaxed after, you know, coming, coming down after the workday and then better sleep at night. Those, just those four alone are home runs. You know, you know, it's interesting. Like right now you have the whole remote workforce thing happening, tech companies, you know, I could see somebody, oh, look, and tech companies, you know, Google, Facebook, they don't, to, for them to spend 300 bucks, on a, it's like, yeah, yeah, I mean, they, they spend money on like, you know, when people get jobs at these like, you know, companies, oh, I guess everybody's gone from the Bay Area, but you know, you know, they give them free massages, snacks, like uh, costs of crazy things to keep, to get, get people to, you know, to, to, to join the company. Um, so for them, this is something that would actually be very, very um, attractive to, to send out to their employees, you know, like a Twitter or whatever it is, they have people spread out across, it keeps them productive and, you know, motivated, happy. Think, think about Fitbit, right? And actually the Fitbit guys helped us do some of this design, just so you know. Um, but Fitbit has a huge corporate sales division. They sell to hospital networks. They sell to all these groups for wellness for all their people. This is a, an entire market we want to go after. We have 
some sales organizations and distributor people that we're talking to, investors in our business right now who want to take it to those markets and, and sell not just to the individual, but to the organization itself. Okay, so you you really just hit the market. Uh, so it's, we're, we're kind of at this inflection point where you're basically commercializing the product. Like right in the next, I think probably in the next three months, six months, we can start to see, expect news flow, milestones, you know, sales. So that's going to start happening. I mean, so the good news is you're already in the market. This is not like something where we got to wait six months. Okay, it's right now. It's that inflection, which is what we like here. Is you know we like these companies that you know address massive markets. At an inflection point, and there's multiple catalysts that can, you know, drive the value. Um, I want to ask you, Scott, how big do you see, do you have like like what, what's your vision for the company? Where do you see this like you know three years from now? Like how big can this opportunity become? Bigger than me, way bigger than me. Um, the vision is so large that we are actively right now bringing on more talent. Like we are hiring fast right now. We're bringing on more coders. We're looking for more executives. We're all these affiliates coming to us now. It's, it's already getting uh, huge. But the vision I see, think of like a hub and a spoke model. The hub is our app, which has like Netflix, new signals being launched every few months into it. People are excited. That builds momentum. Everyone's re-engaged and excited about new signals for different uses, right? Like diet, memory, performance, not just what we've got. And then the spokes are the different ways to use the technology. This is just the first one, right? Then think of, you know, massage beds, pillow top or a mattress toppers, ski helmets, yoga mats, like float pods. My, one of our investors owns True Rest, 300,000 people floating in pods in salt water. I mean, he and I went in one of these things with our relaxed signal, felt like I was in space, weightless, like, out of my mind tripped, okay? It was incredible. So there's all these things that we're, we're trying right now to see where this technology can go. It all connects to the app, but people use it all throughout their day. Okay, I wanna ask you, you mentioned, you, you said a word, kind of, you said trip, and I'm also thinking, can this have any type of, you know, we, we're dealing with a lot of psychedelic companies right now. Can, can this give you the effect of a psychedelic trip? That I cannot talk about. Okay. We can. Not, what, okay. So we got to somebody say, how about like you know getting hot, like you know cannabis, any of that stuff. Like basically, that's something you can't talk about. Oh so, yeah, you know we, we got. Yeah, I mean, like it's a I guess a gray area. So let's be really clear. Um, we give sensations only. So there's no drug in your body. We're not making any medical claims, right? This is basically just a mood, feeling, sensation product. Our parent company is doing all the medical claims through FDA. That's the delineation. That's, that's, uh, that, that's a real medical company. It's a medical device company. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 For 15 years um, and they're doing an incredible job. So we are the mood, sensations and feelings. And so, you know, for us, yes, I can relax your muscles just like, you know, a muscle relaxant would that you might feel from something like an edible or something like you're smoking. I'm not gonna give you 100% of that exact feeling or that high. These things are never one-to-one. -one. We give you these subtle sensations throughout your body to support mental health. Okay. That's the point of our technology. So what we tell people is, Hey, this is sort of the future of mental wellness. You know, this isn't going to be like press the button and you get some electric shock and holy cow. But some of these signals are pretty strong. You know, they, they, they build, they build over, you know, it's a 10 day onboarding. It takes my first time playing it. Um, is about 15 minutes. I started to get the first sensations of the relaxed signal was the first one I ever tried. Um, and then these other signals, the more you do them, the faster you start to feel them. So now, you know, most of all of our team and all of our network, they feel these things within two, three minutes of playing them. Um, but you have to build those pathways. You have to kind of train your brain to know what's going on here. Okay. Um, it, it, it all comes down to non-covalent bonds. So I know people are going to have all these questions about the science of what's happening in your body when you do this. Just think about what happens when a non-covalent bond um, hits your body. Okay, when you take ibuprofen, for instance, a non-covalent bond happens. It's not a chemical bond. It's an exchange of electrons that fires um, to your protein receptors. And if that can happen, you don't need the substance there. Okay. So if we can have a, a, an ability to help people feel a certain way with no chemicals in their body, um, no toxicological side effects, we think that's a home run. 
you know, essentially, you, know, you mentioned something which is interesting. You said this is like, you know, some mental health. And, I, you know, this really could be the future of mental health. Because why do people go to psychologists, psychiatrists? Because they're unhappy. I mean, basically, they're unhappy. They're depressed. You know, there's some sort of issue there. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a psych, it's a mental issue, right? And if this gives them the instant gratification of those feelings, that changes the state, right? Essentially, you're changing states. Yep. As uh, like Tony Robbins, you know, Tony Robbins, everybody, uh, Tony Robbins is all about. What's Tony that? Robbins has the only XL size on the planet right now, by the He's way. That one? Yeah. Yep. Peter Diamandis is one of our uh, advisors and partners. He's like the X Prize Singularity. Peter University. Diamandis is, is one of your advisors? Not not paid. Just okay. a friend and a mentor. Yeah. He yeah. uses the product, yeah. tells people about it, and he sent one, our X, only XL we've ever made, because we've got 500 more coming right now, because a lot of people are like, I can't fit it over my head. So, but the first one ever went to Tony. Yeah. Wow. wow. By the way, I think now, the size, because the one you said, this actually is, is a little large. Right? Is there a difference? You can get different sizes, right? Yeah. We have okay. an X coming. Some, it's supposed to really go like this, right? There's there's multiple ways to wear it, right? Because some people, we have a bunch of models who wear this. They bend the back like this. Oh. And it just like form fits to your forehead. But you oh, kind of really like, <laughs> you, you kind of look like a tax yeah, okay. accountant. This is like, you know, a tax collector. But most people like me, they just wear it around their neck or under their shirt, right? Okay. So no one even knows I'm wearing this throughout the workday. I'm on calls, I'm on Zooms, I'm in meetings, and I just, I'm wearing this under my shirt. Okay. It's, it's, it's the same sensations either way because it's delivering a field about this big to your brain and your, your body, okay? The top of your spine, which is the entry point to your central nervous system, we're triggering all these responses in a field about this big. So whether it's here or here, doesn't it doesn't really matter so okay so you know it's funny when i got this i was like this thing is too big uh, i didn't realize you have to i didn't you know because yeah. i don't read instructions this i i it's pro it's probably an issue let's say like i, I don't really want to read instructions and it's probably an issue like probably people you know they um uh they that's I, you know in terms of uh you know like in, oh, here's what i want to ask because we got a question here what's the satisfaction rate or what's the okay so you're selling these uh, and I think I asked you this. I asked you, like, what's the return rate? What's the churn rate? You know, what's the, okay, so um, let's see here. Uh, okay, this guy's at brand. What's the success rate on the product? I guess he's like, yeah, what's, how many returns do you get? 93% success rate on the product right now. Our blinded studies were uh, 98 to 100% success rate. People could tell if it was on or off, if it was sleepy, alert, you know, when we did those tests last year. But the customers in the market right now, it's about a 93% success rate. And there are, you know, 7% of people are returning the product, which I, you know, for a new product, that's about a B plus, A minus. With our new signals and the optimization we're doing, it's going to go way better, A plus. Um, but I'm pretty excited about that number because most of those 7% were people who double ordered or got it as a gift or didn't really know what the heck it was and return these products back in November before we fixed all of our onboarding. So I'm really excited about that number. Um, you know, we, we published that number. This is one of our top numbers we look at every single week. Um, signal strength for me, you know, because 10% of you, 10% of our members, like it's too strong. It's like five minutes, they gotta take it off. 10% of people is, is what this person asks. is like, I don't really know how I feel. I don't know how much I feel. It's, this one's nice. I like alert, I like focus, but these ones I don't really feel. And then everyone else is in the middle. Like, this is cool. I use this for sleepy only, and it's amazing. And that's okay, right? Think about it. You don't watch everything on Netflix. You, you only need to have a specific signal that you love. At almost everybody now, 3,000 people, usually everyone chooses two to three. And uh, over a third of our people just focus on one signal, and that's their home run. That's their favorite. I use relax every day for my lower back. I use alert every morning because it just – you know, it wakes me up. I feel amazing. I use sleepy at night. So that's totally fine for us. But our biggest obstacle right now is just educating. We have to teach people what this thing is. And the more we drill that in, as we're seeing, our conversion goes down, our, our returns go down, and people are, are onboarded much better. Okay. So, uh, no, so this is, okay. So I, I actually was just doing some quick math. Um, Basically, the, the real money comes from the, the subscriptions, right? Which is 20 bucks a month approximately. Yep. Um, so if you get you get a hundred thousand subscribers, a hundred thousand subscribers at 20 bucks is two million a month, 
right? Yep. 24 million a year revenues, just a rec it's recurring, right? Recurring revenues, which is, you know, the holy grail of the SaaS model, the whole sale, you know, this is the, the holy grail of, of NASDAQ, you know, of the, of the stocks that are trading at 100x multiples. Um, basically, you get to 100,000, you're going to have a billion dollar market cap because, you know, if you're doing 24 million in revenues recurring, plus the other thing, you know, the market right now is paying 50 times, 40 times for companies with that type of thing. Plus, you got this X factor of this like blue sky. This is like some, there's nobody else doing this, right? This is like, you know. Yeah, there's, there's 37 patents behind this technology. Nobody can do this, okay? And these are continually upped all the time. We have our um, our parent companies, uh, senior partners at Perkins Coie. They've been protecting this thing. That's a big. That's a big law. That's a big IP firm. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. That, that's our uh, that's our partner here. So we want to be able to control this really, really well. Control the messaging and continue to build on the marketplace. So real quick as a comp. So everyone who knows Aura Ring, a lot of biohackers, functional medicine counselors. I mean at least half of our first several thousand people that use Happy have Aura Rings. They put the, pill, the, the sleep signal under their pillow, the sleepy signal going, their deep REM goes up 20% faster in the night. They hit deep REM way faster with the sleepy signal coming onto them. And Aura Ring, it took them the first year, it took them to sell their first 10,000 products, okay? We're ahead of where they were when they did this two, three years ago. Oh. And then they sold, and they sold a hundred thousand products in three months after those first ten thousand were sold. Okay, they absolutely hit it, and we have the same market partners, same funnels, same customer demographics, almost the same price point. Or rings are three hundred bucks. We're like just over that. The only difference is membership subscription, right? But we have that X factor, right? Aura just gives you tracking data. We actually can give you sensations on your body. And eventually I want to track too and give you data and bring it all into one. I mean, the, the wearable tech industry is exploding. So this is, uh, we feel like we're in the right spot. Okay. I mean, yeah. Okay. So basically this is a real, very, very clear runway to a billion dollar valuation. I mean, it's like, it's like, you know, clear as day. How many, okay. So let's, what's the share structure? How many shares out do you have fully diluted? Um, around 45 million. Shares. It's, it's, it's like a bargain, basically. It's the stock is what about? It's I think it's a buck. I think it. Oh my god, it's a buck now. So, yeah, a buck so by eighty something cents. I don't know. It's Forty-five million valuation. Um, fifty. Let's call it fifty million dollar valuation. And yeah, very tightly held. We might. I want. You probably need to say that too. Very tightly held. Most of us are in this for the long haul. Locked up for many years. We don't. I. I don't know if I'm. I don't even know if I'm supposed to say things like this, but. Half of all the stocks are not even out there. Like we don't even care about that. We're growing this business for the long haul. This is a billion or bust kind of a thing. So, you know, if people out there who want to do this, I'm not getting that money when people are trading in the marketplace. We have our money. We're growing our market. We're able to do what we need to do and then tell the world about it. I mean, I like being uh, a public stock because we can educate people so much easier. On calls like that. And they were invested. People can actually listen when you're a consumer product. I think it's a great thing for consumer products to have a more people can they can buy the stock, then they're a stakeholder in the thing. Yes. I can't uh, tell you people they they'll email our customer service and say, You guys are you guys are a stock? Like, how are you a stock? You just started. We don't have the box, the box should have a symbol on the back. We haven't right even there. we haven't even told them we're we're just gonna announce this. Next month we're gonna start doing that, but We've been getting so many people being like, I've been using this for six months. How, I didn't even know, right? How many people buy Apple stock because they use Apple products? Uh, everybody. I mean, like, I mean, this, this is hardcore. That's like a, a lot of those people are. In there. So this is the same thing. This is, um, yeah, I think it's a great comparison because Apple will say, so what, I think I think if you just put this, this, the stock symbol on the box and people will know. Uh, but okay, so essentially there's a real clear path to this being a $20 plus stock because 50 million shares, times you know 20 is a billion dollars and you get that valuation if you just have i mean it's such a low bar 100,000 100,000 paying subscribers is nothing i mean in in the consumer you know wearables fitbit space how many fitbits are out there like a, a trillion there's a lot there's a lot i don't even know the number but and these like aura the aura guys the aura ring which is hardly anybody even knows about that yet but they've already paved i mean it's the same same idea Crazy stuff. Okay. 
Um, let me just get to some quite audience questions. I'm sorry. I, I, I apologize for not getting to the questions quicker. Um, okay. Great question from Morpheus. Has there been clinical studies to ensure no long-term adverse effects from magnetic fields? Great question, Morpheus. And good name, too. Uh, so, yes, the clinical studies have been going on for over 12 years on this technology. Um, we, the, our parent company um, helps run all of the safety and clinical trials. They're, again, they're going through FDA on all these trials with signals that are much more potent than what we're doing right now, right? Um, we've had people using this for seven years, 24 seven uh, around their heads with zero side effects. Um, we've had over 400,000 hours of play amongst all of the members uh, for many, many years. Some of us have been using, I've been using this for years already, just hasn't been out public, you know? And so 400,000 hours of play, zero serious adverse events it's a medical like it's the word is saes so we've had zero and it's probably important to mention that all of our signals that hit the market go through an entire evaluation protocol so first we start with animal tests with mice testing for behavior right because a mice a mice doesn't have placebo they're a mouse how are they going to know that a sleepy signals on them okay um we do all the mice studies but then we do all um pathology workups Histograms, we check tissue, we check organs, we, we run the signals on these for a long, long time. And then we see if there's any issues and there's been zero issues in any of the reports. Um, so, you know, we still have the liability disclaimers on the app. Hey, if you've got a pacemaker, probably shouldn't use it. Hey, you know, make sure you're an adult to buy the product. Hey, you know, if you're pregnant, probably shouldn't do it because we haven't done a $400 million study with Stanford and Scientific American yet. So just the regular disclaimers that every single other company in the PEMF industry puts on their disclaimers, we have the same ones. But yes, we're always checking for safety. The last thing I will say is um, people are worried about Bluetooth and EMF, okay? There's a great article that has a ton of views. It's actually ranked on page one for us on Google. Dave Asprey put it out called Good Versus Bad EMFs. We, we actually have a, an airplane mode for our product where you don't need to be connected to Bluetooth. There's no EMF hitting you. And you, you know, your brain, by the way, gives off EMF. Your heart gives off EMF. There's good EMF. Your, your body is, communicates through frequency. It's actually a good thing. Um, but what you don't want are the negative EMFs coming from power lines and cell phone satellites and outlets and those types of things. So we're able to actually block out bad EMFs and, and give you very, very, you know, microscopic signals that can help your, your cells relax. You can help your, your um, protein your receptors change shape. We can help give you these things in your body to support health and support balanced, you know, mental states rather than something that's potentially harmful to you. Okay. So, and, <clears throat> so the inventor behind this is, is actually the guy, be, again, he's the guy behind Cialis. So one of the, the warnings you have, the potential side effect is if you have an erection lasting longer than four hours from using this, Call your doctor immediately. Seek immediate help. If That's that true. happens, call us first because I want to know what signal that was and I want to bottle it and play it <laughs> everywhere else. Exactly. Exactly. This is, that's going to be the, the best seller. <laughs> oh, yeah. But this is just a billion dollar idea. That signal, I mean, I can't, I'm not saying we have it or not, but I'm saying we're not going to release that signal until we are further down the line. I mean, I, oh, oh I, I, was, I was making a joke, but you're saying that there is a possibility of that signal? There is a possibility of a lot of signals, yeah. Um, but we can't make any public statements until things are, are there. But we've had um, many discussions about this. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that Cialis and Viagra made is that they were actually created for women. And then when they launched, they bought them for the men. And the men were the only people who have ever used it. And now like no, none of the women buy it and use it. We don't want this product to become that. Uh, this product and all the other, you know, supplementary products that people use, we want this to be a mental wellness product and we don't want any one signal to take over. Again, this is a platform technology. It's like if Spotify was only known for country music, like we don't want to do that, that, that would limit our market. So we're just, we're just being very careful of how we message. Okay. Uh, are you the only company that has a license for this technology from the parent? 
Yeah, so we have the global license for the consumer side for humans. All these signals we get first rights on for humans, okay? They do have other work that they're doing with oncology and the pain space and all these medical claims. Um, but in terms of humans and consumer uh, goods, we have the lockdown on all of these sensations. Uh, okay, so you're selling right now. How are you selling right now? Just online? Yep, we just start on our website. That's the first place. We also have a few distributor ships going on. Uh, we we have you know some veterans organizations love this. Uh, we'll be talking more about some of these partnerships coming out soon. But a, distri a distribution model is going to be one of the ways that we grow um, to these groups that buy it for 30 40 percent off and then sell it to all of their customers in their markets. That is a it's a big place for us. We are looking into Amazon right now. One of our board members has the largest Amazon fulfillment center in America, Mark Tim. Um, and so we've been preparing that for about six months. We wanted to get our reviews under control, our returns down. You know, you got to get everything right before you go on Amazon. Yeah, it's interesting. No, I mean, like, like uh, you know, all so essentially your marketing, I, I saw on your website, you have a lot, a lot of these influencers, a lot of these people who are like all over social media, like you know, the biohacking people. You know, essentially, I think this appeals to a lot of the like, you know, uh, sort of like, you know, I don't know, these guys you see on YouTube, these like, you know, entrepreneur, like the the Gary V, uh, what is it? The, what's the guy, there's guys who talk about the sleep uh, thing, like they're very into the sleep, getting perfect amount of sleep, yeah. hacking, it's a whole. Yeah, a lot of our networks are in, you know, I was just on a Zoom call with Genius Network, some of the top marketers across the planet. And just in our group, there was over 15 people wearing, the, literally wearing happy during the zoom it was a very cool moment just to see all these people starting to use this throughout our you know high level entrepreneurial networks that's going to be where we grow because those people are starting to share with hundred thousand people in their network yeah, they have yeah it's 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 they have massive audiences uh, and, and you know people who are willing to spend 300 bucks it's you know it's they have the right audience yeah. uh okay so rams is saying you will sell a ton of these at airports can this yes. make you Ramsey, you should email us because that's exactly what we're talking about right now. We're actually talking to a company that wants to sell these on the TVs in the airports. So this is a huge, think about going on a four hour flight and playing sleepy and relax playlists back and forth an hour each as you do a four hour, five hour flight. It, I, here's a great story. Um, one of our initial investors, I literally met him and his wife is here in Phoenix, um, Terry Mitchell and his wife. They, it was one of our old ugly products that we just, our prototypes. And I was telling about it. Just, they, I just saw him next to me on the plane. We started talking and they're like, no way. I was like, you want to try it? I gave him this, one of them, I gave the sleepy signal. And the other one, I gave the relaxed signal because his lower back was, had issues and sitting on a plane was miserable. Um, in 10 minutes, both of them completely passed out for the next two and a half hours of the flight. Completely passed out until the battery died on the thing. And they woke up and I just, and they looked over and they gave me their email and they both invested. They think they invested 50 grand into the business like the next day. It was the coolest experience. And I, you know, I'm still friends with these people now. This was a couple of years ago. That's what happens when people use the technology and we have a money back guarantee. So if you don't like it, we'll give you your money back. Someone else wants the product, like waiting in line. Okay. So we are happy to give a guarantee behind the product. We do stand behind it. You know, and if someone really doesn't have a good experience, I don't want you to lose money. I want you to, you know, either call us and we'll coach you through it to help you feel it better. Because that's what some people do. They just call us and we help them do 30 minutes of a sleepy, do 30 minutes of alert, go back to sleepy and then alert. And then you'll start to get the sensations and you're good. You're probably going to have guys on YouTube doing videos that talk like doing reviews and explain how it's used, all the stuff. It's going to be, yeah. you know, uh, crazy. Yeah. Trevor's asking <laughs> Uh, can you connect it simultaneously while AirPods are connected playing music? Can you get the feeling of music? I think he's asking maybe. No, no. Yeah, he's asking, will it work with Bluetooth on two oh, different Oh, okay. So we built this product to be able to turn on, and then you can just turn your phone off if you want to. So you can play these signals up to four hours at a time. So you can literally just play a signal and just turn off your app or go do something else or disconnect if you want to. And it's going to keep playing as long as the logo breathes in and out, you're getting the signal. So if you want to use AirPods or Beats or anything else that's Bluetooth, you can do those in conjunction with our product. The only downside I would say is sometimes there's a little bit of a fuzz. There's a tiny little fuzz because this is actually blocking out bad EMF, which sometimes comes from your AirPods. 
And so there can be a little bit of a fuzz. Some people have noticed it, others don't notice it. So, but if you keep the signals around your neck, it usually doesn't affect you too much if it's in your ears, okay? But yes, you can do both in conjunction. Listen to music. We have a lot of people who meditate oh. this or do yoga. So they play whoever that, you know, Europe, that Englishman is on Headspace. They love doing that together with this or playing yoga and listening to music or things like that. Okay. This is all, all, the, all, all the right markets, all the demographics that are, you know, are willing and able to pay 300 bucks and 20 bucks a month. It's perfect. So, okay. Morpheus asking again, how close does it have to be to your head or body to be effective? Yeah. So this uh, product is a copper coil wound around uh, to 28 gauge wire wound around 30 times. And it's creating a very tiny, very precise magnetic field as you're playing each of the signals here on the chip. Think of it as like a 3d egg, Jack. So this, anything in this space is getting the signal, okay? It's like the Earth's magnetic field, right? It's this high, about eight inches above, eight inches below, a couple inches on each side. This is why people can put under their pillow and still have the effect through the pillow, okay? Because it's a field that goes through bone, blood, skin, muscle, everything, okay? Um, addictive for sure, I see that comment. So let's talk about that. Because one of our top customer bases right now are, are, are people that are in recovery, right? Our fastest buyers right now are seniors that are achy, biohackers that want to get the best out of their life. They want to feel good at the touch of a button because they're in the biohacking. They love gadgets. Um, functional medicine doctors and practitioners, counselors, psychologists. And then we have veterans you know, and addicts and a bunch of other people who love using this for stress or for creating good habits instead of bad ones. So when someone says, can you get addicted to this product? There's nothing chemically addictive in our product. There's no chemical in your body. However, I'm not dumb. Exercise is, is addictive if you get it because it releases a dopamine in your brain. Eating good food and seeing the benefits is addictive to people. Getting good sleep should be addictive to people. I don't like to use the word addiction because there's no chemical addiction happening here, but we are seeing a very sticky customer base in our app. We see usage rates. I mean, our daily active user rate is, is on par with Netflix, Jack. We're seeing the usage rates. So I like to call it good habits for mental wellness. I don't want to call it addiction because I feel like addiction has a negative term. And we're helping people like with mental wellness and balance and engaging with their life. So if there's a if a down if there's a downside that you guys can explain to me that I don't know about, please tell me. Oh, this is uh, uh this touches all 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 the hot buttons here. Um, okay, so we got oh so uh, great question here. Um, any plans to make the pro I mean, so you're gonna have other designs, right? Like a neck, I guess different form factors of this. Yes, our goal is to have over a dozen different form factors. So the back of my chair, imagine having a, a small sleeve that's sleek and it goes on the back of a chair that plays, you know, a signal onto your spine um, or your butt. Uh, imagine something that's like a ski helmet. You know, our goal is to shrink this down as much as possible, right? Like we, we're talking about watches or belts or collars of a shirt even, or you know, a simple patch, even backpacks could have this on it. Like there's so many ways this technology can be used, but no, no two people are the same, right? Everybody wants to potentially use it differently, right? Like some people love laptops. Some people need a desktop. Some people only use their phone. So we're trying to get different use cases so that people can use the one that's most efficient for them. Uh, so, great great I, question. And this is this can this be used for like yapping dogs, little dogs that yap? Oh my gosh. So right now we have, we do not have the license for this, by the way. Our parent company has the license. We have had many discussions and we even have a couple of partners that we're in talks with that want to use this on pets. The reason is because we have a lot of customers already that they'll have a cat or a dog sitting next to them on the couch when they're playing a signal and then and the, the, the animal just mellow, they completely mellow. And we'll get emails. We have many emails from people or saying, hey, does this work on animals? I saw this happen to my cat. I saw this happen to my dog. You know, you know, it's not really built to put around a dog's neck, by the way. The, like we have to build a new form factor for a collar or a sleep bed for a pet.
But absolutely, this this people usually buy things for their pets before they use them on themselves. New technology. So with our partners we're talking to, this is a potential home run. Uh, can this help with mild anxiety issues? So anxiety is a medical claim, as is depression and pain and insomnia. Um, we're not allowed to make those claims. Um, but if you're asking if it helps people have less stress, the answer is yes. People use the sleepy, or not sleepy, I'm sorry, relax and calm and happy signals are the three top signals for that. Uh, what's your, your one revenue target? Uh, that's good. You, um, I would turn you to our prospectus to see our unit sales targets and our partners targets. Um, I believe we're three quarters of a million dollars already sold just before we've launched our marketing uh, in the last several months. Um, depends on how you're looking at the, the next year revenue targets. But if we can get our 15,000 units sold, you just multiply that number. That's our goal by, I think, October. I don't know the exact number, but I, I think of life in terms of units sold, sorry, not exact dollars, because there's Canadian dollars, there's US dollars, there's subscription rates, there's per unit rates, but you can do the math and post it. 15,000 units by October is our, our, our next hit here. But again, you have to look at this as a, as a hockey stick. Getting the attention and early adopters to get those first thousand out the door, which we've got 3,000 of the first 10,000 already out the door, that hits our inflection point. That's how Aura Ring got 100,000 sold within just a few months after that. So really the marching orders are get the 10,000 out the door, make sure the customers are happy, make sure the you know, conversion rates are good, and then we'll be able to go from there. Okay, uh, interesting question. What, how, this, what is behind this name, Hap B? Uh, I get so much flack for this. Happy.com is impossible to buy. That's why. So the logo is a B and everyone on our team, this is like sentimental. They want the B to be in the name. So we said, okay, if our goal is to make people happy, but we can't get the, the, the domain H-A-P-P-Y, well, let's just make it Hap B and do a little play on words. So there you go. H-A-P-B-E-E, happy. People still say the word happy. And I like that because I want people to have a happy feeling every time they say our name. You know, there is something psychological that happens when you say the name and it's called happy. That's the whole point. Uh, look at this. We get, we're selling we're selling product here. This is like a QVC. Steve just bought a, uh, one of the happy units and he bought the stock. Uh, okay. Look at this. Adoption. The adoption is starting to happen. Yep. There you uh, go. Let's see here. Okay. Um, bu -bu 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 -bum. Okay. Uh, do you, okay, so we got you, you answered this. You had four different form factors. We answered this, right? Yeah, there's one of our so there's a lot of PEMF companies out there, um, and we like that. The more you know, rising tide raises all ships, and a lot of these other companies like Apollo and NeoRhythm and um, Halo Neuro, there's a lot of direct stim companies, they just basically pulse you with an electric shock or a magnetic field, but it's only one frequency. It's like playing a C chord on the piano and they say it supports relaxation or memory or things like that. We are literally playing 24 million bits of information on you that uses the full spectrum DC to 22 kilohertz. So we're playing like the box Sinatra, Sonata onto your body to deliver these sensations in a very, very precise way. And it's coming straight from compounds that you would ingest. So. It's a completely different model. And so I love that all these other companies out there are rolling out the red carpet. Okay. Uh, Scott, I want to ask you actually, just, you know, you, you started talking a little bit about your background and the whole, but can you, you know, give it kind of a little, tell the audience a little about like, you know, your back, again, the details of your background, like business even done, like, you know, about you, you know, you're the company, you're in Phoenix, right? The company's based in Phoenix. Yeah, we're, we're all over. We're virtual all over the country and in Vancouver, BC with our teams. But yeah, mainstays are Seattle, Vancouver, and here in Phoenix, where I live. And how did you get into this? What's your background? So I, um, I'm a consumer tech guy. I'm, an, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Um, I invested in this technology, you know, 12, 13 years ago with my you know, family and friends. That's how I heard about it. 
Um, but I've got the largest school fundraising franchise called Apex Leadership Co. in America. We've got 4 million kids that we serve, hundreds of franchisees in 38 states. So I've built that company over the last 10 years. My wife's a teacher. But what people don't realize is that sounds really fun and kiddie, which it is fun. But we have an entire team of app developers and coders and marketers and manufacturers and promotional company that, that are all on team. So all I had to do was bring over like five of the best to help grow this and blow this up. And it was like a no brainer. I've also got a company called myfirstsale.com. We teach thousands of kids how to be entrepreneurs. So there's, it's a courses to learn all about entrepreneurship. And we actually help them launch a storefront page at myfirstsale.com. It's like a passion project. We do it for fun. And so I just, I'm in this technology space. I love wearables, the consumer space. So um, when this whole idea came up that we should take uh, the emulate medical technology into the consumer world, I was the first person to step up and say, uh, I, I know what you got to build here. Here's what you should do. And all of the emulate folks are, you know, they're older, they're scientists. They don't really know the consumer space because they're in FDA medical world. And so it was just kind of the perfect marriage for me to come in with my team and, and launch this. And so I will say, this is a great story before we wrap up. My grandma was the first person to try Relax. She, has, she had arthritis for a long time, all these problems, didn't sleep well. And she's the reason I'm doing this, by the way. We, I went and said, maybe this could help her. And so I didn't tell her what it was. I didn't tell her the name of it or this signal or anything. I just put this thing on her head and just said, hey, this may make you feel better. And 10, 10 to 15 minutes later, she was hugging people. She was up, jumping, bouncing around, feeling amazing. That night, she slept 11 hours. And the next day, my grandpa gave us $100,000. for. She said, you got to launch this business. And that is how this whole thing got going. And I was like, okay, I'm in. If it worked on my grandma, who has no idea what any of this is, it's going to work on a billion other people. Okay. Uh, it's very important. So you've you started a previous this Well, it's an existing business, which has, you said you have 4 million. So you have a team that's basically... You, you, so you have a serious team. You have 4 million customers, essentially, right? You said the school kids? Yeah, we've served over 4 million students. It's a school fundraising company. So we teach leadership and fitness. It's called Apex. And so we, it's a franchise model. So franchisees come in, they launch Kansas, or they launch Florida, or they launch Texas. And so we're in 38 states all over the country. We've been doing it for 10 years. You know, Entrepreneur 500 list, fastest growing franchises for like eight years. So it's a great business. Uh, it was my one of the first biggest ones for me, and then Happy came along, and here we are. Okay, so the bottom line is you 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 know how to build, you know how to scale business, how to build out teams, you know operations. So execution execution is not going to be an issue here, essentially. No, we've got an incredible team. Um, we've got, I mean, our board alone and our advisors. I mean, I told you about some of our launching partners and advisors, but Chris Rivera, our board chairman, he started Hyperion. Go look up Hyperion. It's over a billion dollar market cap now. Charlie McNerney's on our board. He is the director of safe tech safety for Microsoft with Bill Gates for many, many years. Now he's doing the exact same job at Expedia. Okay, Mark Tim, he's, he's, he runs Zig Ziglar's company as the largest Amazon fulfillment center. These guys are on our board, okay? Rob Diziak, he was the president of Winnipeg Stock Exchange, helped take over a dozen companies public just like this. Um, Mike Matisic, incredible CFO experience in public companies. So we just got a stacked deck of people that are working on building this thing into, what did you call it? A hundred bag? hundred bag. I, this is, a, we need a, a hundred bag or stock, meaning a stock that goes up a hundred X. So for you, that would be basically uh, $75. So, you know, a hundred X from where we technically started, you know? Okay. okay. Uh, so if to, to be to be seventy five dollars, you would need to have uh, two hundred fifty thousand yep. uh, customers, paying customers, and that would give you five million. What is it? Five million. What two hundred fifty thousand would give you five million month revenue, sixty million a year. A little more. Uh, and, you know, fifty x three billion. You know, hey, do the math backwards. Seventy bucks. Yep. There we go. Uh, how dif how difficult would it be to get to, you know, let's call it a uh, hundred thousand? Yeah, the hundred thousand is a big milestone. How difficult? How long would it take? Do you think to get there? 
That's that's a tough question, maybe. Yeah, when you're running a business like this in the digital marketing space, it really is a matter of cost per acquisition. Okay. So right now we've been fixing the product, the onboarding, the app, making things clean, you know, getting our manufacturing in order, and we've just been testing our manu our, our marketing spend. And now we've gotten our couple hundred bucks per customer is pretty good and it's creeping down every day. We're seeing that number. Once that number gets in line, which we are very close, all we have to do is multiply the spend because we're not losing money anymore. We're making money for every customer we bring on. And since this is a membership model, we have an ability to market higher because we care about long-term subscriptions. Does that make sense? So it's really, for me, I don't look at it as like, hopefully I can sell X amount by X date. All I'm looking at every day with my team is CPA, right? Cost per acquisition. What's my CAC? When are we hitting this number? And what are the levers I need to pull to get there? That's all we do. And once we're hitting that, we're just ratcheting it up. And so I love watching this thing just start creeping down. You know, we're, we already have several funnels that are under that. We just, some of those, you don't, you can't spend a ton because they're either retargeting or they're a direct ad to someone's client base, right? But we are now learning the magic that gets us over that line. Aura Ring was the exact same deal. Uh, how, what's the percentage of insider ownership? So basically myself and our board and our insiders, uh, yeah. almost half of oh, the so whole. There's motivation here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's why I said earlier, half the stocks are locked. This is a very tightly held company. This is, we went public to tell the world about this. So this is still, you know, early ground floor stuff. You know, we're, we are in this for many years and we, this, the vision is following what we're saying because I'm building the next form factor. I'm building the next ma many signals. I'm building the app to reflect that. I'm building new manufacturing uh, lines to be able to reflect the growth. You know, we're just, we're getting ready. Uh, interesting comment. This is for uh, uh, eSports, uh, uh, because, uh, focus or whatever. So uh, that, it's funny. You actually, Scott, there's synergies between you and a couple of companies in our, <laughs> in our universe, which I think I've introduced to. So there's, that could be something. Uh, are you? I think somebody was asking about affiliates. Somebody was asking about affiliates, uh, affiliate marketing stuff. Are you? Are you through affiliate like affiliate marketers? You know, like these guys, online guys, and they get like. Yeah, sorry. There's a, for some reason there's a little bit cutting out right now. But you asked about affiliates. Um, yeah. Are you, oh, yeah. We have a whole affiliate plan that we've been building for six months. So you can literally go to happy.com slash partnerships. We built this tech with our marketing partners. You can sign up, create your landing, the URL of your landing page, and you can put in your account and we auto send you payments right away as you share to your audience. We also have a sharing kit that's a clickable PDF that educates all affiliates on how it works. We have swipe copy. Videos to I have five videos that I made with my team to educate any affiliate on how to talk about the technology How to educate the customers how to use it? This is all a very seamless process that we're now preparing to scale to hundreds and thousands of people That want to rep the brand the problem there is making sure that they say the right stuff because you never know someone can say anything Yeah, do you uh so you're going to have that guy, you know, the guy who does the, the videos. Yeah, here I am sitting in my garage with a Lamborghini. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Uh, let's see here. So, okay, so basically um, uh, somebody – so if anybody's interested in the affiliate marketing, go to the happy.com website and they can sign up somewhere, whatever it is. Okay. Partnerships, yep. Okay. Uh, what do uh, – Questions coming in right now. Um, how much cash? How much? How much cash on hand do you have? Like, because you know, you consume. Can you hear? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, I, for some reason the internet is uh, breaking up yeah. a little bit. Yeah, but I can hear you well now. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, there's some. I think there's something on your. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you asked about cash in the company. I saw, I heard that, right? Okay. Yeah. So cash in the company, uh, we have, 
two and a half million US uh, to three million US right now, uh, and a bunch of warrants coming. Um, so, and our burn rate is pretty low. So we're able to use that for marketing and operational growth. So we're pretty confident that we've got good cash in the bank right now um, to get ourselves through to the, the profitability number and selling the units. And what's uh, the warrants? How many warrants? Are, what's the warrants? 50 cent. Well, it depends. There's certain levels, but usually it's 50 cent warrants. And we've got you know many millions of dollars of those um, coming as well. Uh, and so that'll just add cash flow to the treasury so that we can continue to grow and, and market the stock and bring on the right team members. Okay, perfect. Okay, so uh, I think this, uh, there's an internet thing. <laughs> wrap this up because your, your internet is... Uh, I, you might be on um scott uh two last questions i'm gonna get back to work making revenues um milestones coming up whose flow can investors look forward to in the next uh you know uh, uh, let's call it eight weeks yeah so there's some you know what i can say you know we've got some great partnerships coming out some great podcasts affiliates um the, the big one today with the patent uh application the provisional for the bed um, but you can look at more along the lines of, of marketing partnerships is going to be some of the biggest stuff going on right now. You're, you're also going to see some of our science studies that are in the works. We've got some sleep studies going on, some memory studies with Cambridge Brain Science, really exciting information there. Um, and then just certain markets, counseling, veterans, addiction recovery, these markets are um, wanting to launch partnerships um, over the next few months. And so you'll see these as we get them. We're in talks right now, a um, few we can't talk about, but a few you'll be able to see here pretty quick. So those are the big milestones. Okay, so marketing, so there's gonna be marketing track. You know, last question, that's it. I uh, always ask every, in your opinion, top three reasons why investors consider HAP Biology stock today? Top three reasons, okay. Um, I think the first one is this is a new platform technology, right? I mean, this is, think of like Apple when they started. We talked about this earlier. It's like the first iPod, um, thousand songs in your pocket. This is a thousand feelings around your neck. I mean, it's very parallel. And so this is a platform technology that we're building. It's a long-term play. It's a grand vision. We're very excited about it. That would be the first reason I would say um, why this is a great stock to hold. Um, number two, uh, the market opportunity. This is you know front and center the mental wellness space, and the by the way the wearable tech space is growing to it's one of the fastest growing industries. It's going to sixty two and a half billion dollars in the next three years. So we're in a great space just with wearables but i think what we really are is a mental wellness product which is one of the fastest growing spaces of all the industries we were worried last year that covid would hurt us covid exploded us because people need mental health they want relaxation they want better sleep they want to feel alert and be in control of their emotions so that's another reason why i think it's just it's one of the fastest growing industries that people are going to want to be in and then number three I mean, we have traction. We're ready to go. We have the we have the inventory. Uh, we've got the market ready. We've got the partnerships. We've got the board. We've got the team on the bus. Uh, and you know, it's fun to watch this thing start to hockey stick. So I think just traction is probably the best answer to the third one. So those are the three I'd say. I uh, wraps it up. That's the main thing. The, the traction is happening. So the, the company's you know, collection point right where we like to. And, you know, on our platform. So, uh, Scott, I we got to get you back. Uh, hopefully, in about a week or so, we'll have you do like a, the, the slideshow formal presentation. Hopefully, you'll have some news then, so we can see. Uh, you know, and I'm gonna have to set. I'm gonna set this up because I just got. I'm gonna set up the thing on the and then I'll give a full review. <laughs> By the way, tons, a lot of traders using this right now. Um, they just go alert, focus, alert, focus. That's their work day. Um, they do about four to six hours and it's just, I mean, I, I use focus for most of this call and it was fantastic. So that's a big one for people that are presenting, selling, trading. Like if you're high functioning exec, those are the signals, alert, focus. That's what I want feedback on from you. Oh, I will, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to set this up. Okay. Uh, thank you everybody. Thank you everybody for joining us in the live stream. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks everyone.